Hi, my name is Joshua and in this video we want to talk about a very important subject in payload and also an often overlooked best practice and this is transactions. For those who do not know what a transaction is, this is a way to bundle multiple database interactions into a single interaction and this either is executed completely or reversed. So if you want to make sure you have action A and you want action B to always follow action A, then you bundle that into a transaction. And if action A cannot be completed, action B is also not done. And if action B fails, action A is reverted. Now, before we can actually make use of transactions, in payload there needs to be, or is one prerequisite that's very important, and that is the correct database. Now, Postgres under our Postgres supports transactions right off the, off the box but with MongoDB you need to make sure that you have a replica set enabled. If you use AtlasDB then that's done automatically and you can just use it but if you use your local DB that does not have a replica set by default. So don't wonder if you trying to use transactions and you're using your local MongoDB instance then it will fail. Okay, let's come to a specific example. We have a banana store and we have a stock of bananas who want to process orders and we want to have audit logs on these orders because we want to know who edits orders and who creates orders. All of these, every single time a banana is ordered, all of this has to be done. The inventory has to be updated, the audit log has to be created and if one of these steps fails we want to revert all of it so we never run off out of or we never create orders for bananas that don't exist and we always can make sure that we know who edited it and if somebody tries to get around it or if there is a problem with saving who edited it then we'd rather not save it at all and have him try again. Here we have now a global that is simply our stock of bananas. Then we have orders. An order is simply an amount that a per somebody wants to order and a recipient. And we have our audit logs, which order or which log what has been ordered, or what is the order that has been created or edited, what action has been taken, and who has done it. The important part now comes when we look at the hooks and this is where I mentioned that if you follow best practice with payload you don't actually have to worry that much about uh, that much about transactions because if you use the payload object that is in the request object then it supports or it it manages transactions right out of the box for the hook lifecycle now the moment I use this and I make calls to the local DB and I create stuff and I update stuff, this all is a transaction. I mean, with the caveat that you have to use a database that supports them. And this is also where a very common mistake happens that people don't use the payload from the requirement, uh, from the requisites, uh, <laughs> the request object. They instantiate payload here with the config and then you don't get them out of the box. Now, let's look at this really quick in action. We have orders, we have our audit logs, we have our inventory of currently five bananas. Now Peter wants to order a banana. One, Peter, and save. This takes now a second because it also creates an audit log that we see here. So I created for Peter an order and we have our updated inventory which is only four bananas now. Let's say we order or we want to update the order from Peter to 10 bananas. Now we only have four more on stock. This will inevitably lead to an error. And if we go to the audit log, no audit log has been created. No bananas have been subtracted. We luckily don't have negative bananas now in our storage. And if I refresh this, this order has also not been um, refreshed so it's still one because we cannot create we cannot order 10 bananas here. Payload also offers us a way to manually create transactions and commit them. This comes down though to a conceptual question about how we build and approach payload projects because doing your own transactions within the context of a payload project is not that recommended and the reason is payload allows us to have hooks and 
you should always use the hooks and put application logic into the ho hooks when possible. Let's take the case we have two developers. One front-end developer, the other back-end developer. The big advantage of putting application logic into the hook is if you're the back-end developer and your front-end developer, if he uses the payload API and does not circumvent it somehow, the hooks always get executed. But if you start building custom endpoints and so on, then you always run the risk that there is miscommunication, that the wrong endpoint gets used, or that um, not all the actions are taken that are necessary to, in this case, to fulfill an order. But if you put the logic close to the payload config, you have a way higher consistency and it's way easier to work and collaborate with other developers because they just need to know the payload documentation and they can be sure if I create an order here, it will be correct. This said, let us look also at an example how we manually can create a transaction. For this, really quick, let's disable, oops, let's comment out the hooks and save this. And here we created a custom route, order banana. And be aware that you only should really do this in your custom routes or even better in a standalone script that we <laughs> have no access to hooks or anything else. Otherwise, use the request object and the payload object from that. Now, the syntax is a little bit different. We need to generate a transaction ID. We need to manually tell the database to begin a transaction. And then we just add the transaction ID to every single database interaction we make here. So when we create an order, when we create an order log, when we update the global, and after all, we commit the transaction, or if we run into an error, we catch it and then we roll back the transaction. Let's try this out really quick. We have here our four bananas and we want to call now the, the custom route where we order a banana. We're just gonna pass order banana and then send this. And we can see the remaining stock is three. We ordered successfully a banana. Let's go here and look at the count, look at the ordered logs and we have here an order. Yes, ah, actually I had an order before that as well. Now, if we order more bananas, so we only have three left, we have two left, we have one left and we have zero left. And if we want to order one more banana, yes, we get insufficient memory. This should not have updated any further because we only have zero bananas. We cannot sell more and we have all four sales of bananas locked here because we only have four bananas. Okay, some additional considerations. First, MongoDB sets a limit of 60 seconds that a transaction can be open, but it is really recommended to close transactions as fast as possible as it usually hinders clean up or can harm the transaction. The same is true for Postgres. Postgres itself does not impose any limitations on how long a transaction can be open, but the same applies, close it as fast as possible as it can hinder performance. And the last thing I want to reiterate is the importance of using hooks and to use the request object and the payload object we get from that, because it ensures that we stay as consistent as possible and we have transitions right off the box. Okay, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful to you. See you the next time.